Okay, I've prepared an experiment for testing the sense function and to demonstrate its usefulness. So I have now connected four of these resistors in parallel onto my breadboard. So all of them are now in parallel, so it's 10 ohm divided by 4. And I have connected them to two little wires at the end, so I can basically deliver up to 40 watts of power to these four resistors in parallel. So I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to monitor the exact voltage across these resistors. That way I can calculate exactly the total power that's delivered to these resistors. So remember, my goal is to give these guys 40 watts so I can monitor that voltage easily. I will connect the positive terminal to the resistors at the back and the negative terminal like so. So that, that does that. Now I'm going to take the the two outputs of the power supply and I'm going to connect them directly to the little wires that I've prepared. So here's one, here's another There we go. So you already know, you can already tell that this is not a very good way of delivering 40 watts of power to something because I have these long cables so there's going to be voltage drop across these tables because there needs to be 4 amps of current going through. These wires are tiny so that's going to be more loss through them and of course the traces on the breadboard are not designed really for 4 amps. So this is just for demonstration. This is not uh, this is not a good way of doing this but it will show us how we can use the sense function to overcome this type of problems because sometimes you don't have a choice but to use the lossy medium to deliver a lot of power to your load. So I'm going to set the power supply to 10 volts already at 10 so you just enter 10 no problem. Now I will t enable the output and we in an ideal case if there was no resistance at all in these cables and in the breadboard we should be able to see 10 volts directly across the resistors but obviously that's not going to happen so let's try that enable the output and it says 9.48 so we're missing just over a half a volt even though the power supply is reporting 9.999 so 10 volts we know that that number is accurate and we know that means that right here we have 10 volts but right here we have only nine and a half the rest of course is being lost through the cable so I want to overcome this and I want to get, deliver exactly 10 volts to this. Well, one way to do it would be to obviously just increase this voltage and go from 10 volts to 10.5 volts. But that's not a good way to do it because the resistance is not always known in advance. You don't know how much loss you're going to have. And on top of that, this only corrects the problem at exactly uh, 4 amps. If this, if this was an active load and the power was fluctuating, you wouldn't be able to correct this by just changing the voltage. So let's go back to exactly 10 volts and to the same issue, so now we're missing half a volt. Let's try using the sense board. Now I have another cable here that I'm going to connect to the sense board in order to measure the voltage directly across here. So first I'm going to disable the output. Then I'm going to take my cable. I'm going to connect the positive terminal to the positive terminal and the negative to the negative, like so. And I will then connect and monitor the positive volt, positive supply from that side, and I will monitor the negative supply from this side. So now I am doing, I'm monitoring that now the power supply has the ability of looking at this voltage ex uh, just like the multimeter is. So now I'm going to turn the output on again. Now you can already see the voltage is higher than it was before once the sense port is connected. That's because there's a secondary loop running inside the multimeter but partially corrects it even if the sense function is not enabled. So you have to be careful with that. That means that the sense uh, ports are, are semi-active even without this. So make sure you always disable the output, connect it to your load, double check it before you turn the power on. <coughs> but if I want to <coughs> excuse me, fully correct this, I just have to enable the sense port and look at that, 9.998, basically essentially 10 volts. So now this voltage, 9.998, and this voltage, 9.998, match exactly, meaning that the power supply is now, now knows about the loss of the cable and is correcting for it. So instead of 4 amps, I have a little bit more than 4 amps, and the difference is, of course, done, that extra current is there so that you can get exactly 10 volts uh, appearing there. And then the power consumption is just over 40 watts 
just over 40 watts and the rest of it is being dissipated in the cable. So here you can see a clear demonstration of how important it is to have a sense function capability like that. I can go ahead and disconnect the sense again so you can see the voltage then goes back to 9.5 volts where there is no correction being applied. So I, and as I was saying, this is only 40 watts. The total power that this guy can deliver is 160 watts, and this is only going to get worse the more uh, load, you, uh, the bigger the load you have here, the less resistance here because the cable is resistant and becomes a bigger portion of that. So now, what other, what, another test I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to look at uh, some of the other features of this power supply before we move on to the other one. So let's, uh, let me clean this up so I can show you another demonstration. So here I want to demonstrate another very useful feature built into the Regal power supplies which the Agilum power supplies do not have. So let's say the output is disabled like it is right now so that the output is turned off and you can see it's 0 volts, amps and watts. And uh, let me take this battery for example and connect it directly to the power supply. So let's say you want to charge this battery and you want to connect it to the power supply and do that. This is a uh, lithium polymer battery, 3.7 volts of course, and maximum capacity is 900 milliamp hours. So let me connect it up and then look and see what happens. So I connect a negative terminal and then you can see here I will connect positive terminal and here we go. Look at that. It tells me the voltage of the battery live on the display while the output is disabled. That may not seem like much, but it's extremely useful because you can detect a fault in your system and a problem with your system before you even enable the output. It can potentially save your circuit from being damaged or the power supply from getting damaged. For example, let's say you have a system with uh, two power supplies in it and then you have made some mistake and there is a short circuit between the first power supply and the second power supply. You turn on the first power supply, then you connect this to your system and you see some voltage here that should not be. This gives you a, a clue that there's a problem and then you don't go ahead and enable the output because if you do, you're going to damage the, uh, the system. So an extremely useful feature built into this where you can read, it acts like a multimeter uh, while the output is disabled. And you can see the battery voltage here is 4.08, the battery is pretty much fully charged. But let's say I wanted to charge it a little bit more. I can set the voltage to 4.2 volts, no problem, and I can limit the maximum current to be half the charge rate. So I can say the current to be 0 0.45 amps, so 450 milliamp. Then I can go ahead and enable the output, and you can see that uh, it's actually in continuous voltage mode because the battery is almost fully charged, so it doesn't need to go to continuous current mode. And you can see the battery is slowly charging, and the current going to the battery is going to go down as a function of time. So here's also another uh, opportunity. For example, you can connect, uh, you can display the wave, and then you can monitor the current and the voltage of the battery. You can see the charge uh, waveform and all that. So it can be, again, another useful feature. So let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see the battery slowly charge. Remove that. So again, I'm going to disable the output like this. And you can see that now it's going to act like a multimeter and it's going to give us the voltage in the battery. So very useful feature built into it. Now let me try the same thing with the other power supply. I'm going to do the same experiment with the other power supply, like so. So I'm disconnecting it from the first one. And on this power supply I have the cables connected to the plus and minus 6 volts. And I'm going to connect it up like so it's connected but for some reason this one doesn't do that which I'm very surprised of why this one of the power supplies has this feature and the other one doesn't what I suspect is that there is a small inconsistency between the firmware on this one and the firmware of the other power supply this is an easily implementable function in fact I discovered that if I were to set this output to zero volts as it is right now, so I'm going to go zero volts, and then enable the output, then it acts as soon as I go to one millivolt even above zero, then it starts reading the supply. So now it's telling me 
that there's of course current being dissipated through the but this is not a this is not a good way of reading a, a voltage this defeats the purpose the idea is to be able to read the voltage when the output is disabled but for whatever reason this power supply doesn't do that so that's one of the things I'm going to ask Regal to enable that function on this power supply the same way it works on the uh, 1116A uh, model uh, so that the same big benefit can be uh, applied to both of them. So that's one of the little issues because of the inconsistency between the firmers. So here's the setup I have for measuring rise time, fall time to see if the power supply has an overshoot and I like to find out how the power supply behaves when it's under load when there is no load. So the, the setup is really simple for our first test. For our first test. I'm taking the output of the power supply and I'm directly connecting it to an oscilloscope. And I'm going to go from the outputs being disabled all the way to 10 volts. And I'm going to measure using the oscilloscope how long it takes for the power, for the output to reach to 10 volts and whether it overshoots 10 volts and whether it stays stable afterwards. So the setup is simple, so let's try that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the scope on, uh, to trigger halfway between 0 to 10 volts. So the trigger is set to 5 volts. The oscilloscope is set on channel 1, it's DC coupled, and you can see this is the old trace at the bottom. So then I'm going to focus on the screen so you can see it better. So I'm going to enable the output like that, and you can see that the curve appears on the oscilloscope. So let's look at the scope. So first of all, you can see on here that we have the output at 9.999 volts, so that's good. Let me come to the scope screen, go out a little bit. So we can see the oscilloscope has captured the rise time of the signal. First thing we notice is that this line right here, that's 0 volts, and that is 10 volts. There's, these are 5 volts per division, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 10 volts. We can see a perfectly damped response, so there's absolutely no overshoot on the display. It, goes, it, it rises right up to 10 volts and then it stays constant. I can also uh, reduce the time so we can see a longer waveform. So let's do it again. There we go. You can see it perfectly goes up and it is approximately that the divisions are 5 milliseconds per division. So we've got 1, 2, 3. So it takes about less than 15 milliseconds for the output to go from 0 volts all the way up to 10 volts. So it's really fast and you can expect a quick response from the power supply under these conditions. Now this is the easy test because the power supply has no load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 40 watt load back on the supply and redo the test. So let's, uh, let's look at that. So I'm going to disconnect these guys from the uh, oscilloscope directly. I'm going to put the load that I made before down here. I had to wait for it to cool down. Um, and then I'm going to connect, let's say the positive to here, connect the negative to here, I'm going to disable the output, and then I'm going to connect this guy and this guy, and we're going to go on a single trigger. So the setup again, very simple, this time we have 40 watts of load. So what I want to find out is if this power supply is now all of a sudden a lot slower because it has to deliver 40 watts. So we're going to measure how long it takes for it to go from 0 watt to 40 watt of power delivery. So let's do that again. I'm going to enable the output, like so. And let's look at the waveform. Here it is. You can see that there is absolutely almost no difference in the performance of the circuit. It goes again from 0 volts to just under 10 volts, and remember the reason it's under 10 volts is because we, I, I do not have the sense port connected right now. So you can see it goes up to the desired voltage in around approximately 15 milliseconds again. Now just to uh, make sure that everything is okay, I'm going to connect the sense port just to make sure that using the sense port we're not going to overshoot because it's still is well below exactly, it reaches exactly the voltage it's supposed to. So let me connect up the sense port to it as well, just for sake of completeness, want to make sure that we are testing everything thoroughly. So I'm connecting it up, let me disable that, zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. So now I'm just doing the same thing I, was, I did before, I have the sense port right here, I will connect the sense port so the output goes exactly to 10 volts as expected.
and like so. So I've connected the sense port. I will enable the sense port on the power supply so I can slow it up. And now I'm going to do the same experiment. I'm going